All right. Now, food labels cannot be misleading. Okay, so if your food label, if the packet says that it is a chicken and barley casserole, that means that inside that packet, it must contain chicken, it must contain barley, and it must be a casserole. Okay, you can't open up the packet if it has beef in there or, or pork. So labels cannot be misleading. And then finally, of course, there are food additives in food now. Now, food additives, first of all, must be assessed okay, for the purpose of their use and used in the very smallest amount necessary. Now, all food additives are given a number and a class. Okay, so for example, it may be E951 or E950. Okay, and basically it allows, it's a universal numbering system, so you can go anywhere in the world and they will, you will be able to tell what additive is in the food. Now, of course, there are good additives and there are bad additives. We'll cover that a little bit later, but it's important to know that uh, good additives are things like vitamins and minerals. Now, food labelling, things to get caught. Of course, we're all becoming more and more health conscious. And we're, of course, wanting to find low-fat, low-sugar uh, types of products. But don't be uh, misled by what is written on the label. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to discuss with you is when you pick up a product and it says low-fat, reduced fat, or fat-free, what does that mean? Okay, so here, is, here are all the numbers. If something is low-fat, it means that it has less than 3 grams per 100 nuts, less than 3 grams of fat per 100 grams. If something is reduced fat, it simply has to be less than 25% of the original version. And if something is fat free, it has to have less than 0.15 gram per 100 grams. Okay, so that's fat. It's important to know that just because something says it's low fat, it doesn't mean that it's particularly healthy for you and you can eat as much of it as you like. And in a few minutes I'll show why. Okay, also, um, just so that you know, low carbohydrate has to be less than 10 grams per 100 grams. And finally, my last message about this labelling is, is that be very careful if you pick up a product and it says that it has no added sugar. Okay, uh, something like an orange juice that has on the label no added sugar doesn't necessarily mean that there's no sugar inside it. Because of course we know that orange juice is made by squeezing lots of fruit and of course fruit has sugar in it. If a label says it has no added sugar, it simply means that at the point of manufacturing it, that no sugar was added then. Okay, but of course it still contains sugar. So just be very careful with your labelling. I'll show you what to be looking for when you read the nutrition panel. Okay, this is um, one of my, just to show an example of what I'm talking about with low fat versus normal fat. And I've used the example of milk. So on the left hand side I have full cream milk, on the right hand side I have low fat. Exactly the same brand. Okay, so as you can see the serving sizes are exactly the same. So that makes it okay to compare them directly. Now the calories, even though it's low fat, there's not much difference in the calories between the full cream and the low fat milk. But of course, the, the low fat milk has much less fat than the full cream. But I will take your attention to the fact that in the low fat milk, it does contain double the amount of carbohydrates. Now what is a carbohydrate? Carbohydrate is a sugar. And what happens to sugar in the body that if it's not used up? Any excess sugar is converted and stored as fat. Okay, so just because something says it's low fat doesn't necessarily mean that it's particularly healthy for you. So what you should be looking for, it's very hard to know all the facts and to remember all of this. So very simply, I've highlighted in red what you should be looking for. You should be looking for, in per 100 grams, more than 3 grams of fibre. If the product does not have fibre, then what you should be doing is adding additional fibre and you can do that with salads or, or vegetables. You should be looking for less than 2 grams of sugar per 100 grams, less than 3 grams of fat, and also less than 200 milligrams of sodium. Okay, so that will give you a good idea of what to be looking for. Now, at the X and Do program, the X and Do system, we promote a protein dominant diet. So what we are looking for is that when you pick up and you read a nutrition panel, you should always be searching for products that have a higher protein content than carbohydrate. And just so that you know, 
uh, very good levels of protein is greater than five grams per hundred grams. So I can see a few of you scribbling down all of that information. If you do need to ask me anything about this slide, you can come and uh, speak to me at the end of the in the session. I'm going to move on now to one of our products to highlight, to go through all of those things. Okay, so this is one of our X and Do lamb cormas. You'll see, exactly like I described, the nutrition information panel contains the serving size, the per serve column, and the per 100 grams. Let's look at the amount of energy. Whoops, wrong button, Natalie. There we go. Okay, so the amount of energy, you'll see that it's a very big portion for such a little amount of calories. The protein, as I mentioned, you should be looking for more than five grams per 100 grams, and this definitely has that. You should be looking for less than three grams of fat, and ours is sitting right on it. You should be looking for less than two grams of sugar, which of course you can see, and you'll note that this product has got more protein than carbohydrate. And finally, the sodium is less than 200 milligrams. So this is a great example of when you pick up a food product, what you should be looking for. Okay, for any allergy sufferers out there, you should already know by now that you have to read the food labels very, very importantly to look for any possible allergy triggers for you. Now, most products will either highlight or actually write out any possible allergy uh, triggers in their food. Now, people can have allergic reactions to things like nuts, to soy products, to, uh, to dairy, to fish, to gluten, okay, and you should be reading those on the labels. Now, if you didn't know this, there are some additives in food that when they are added, they have to have a health warning associated with them on the label. Okay, so anything that has got aspartame, which or, or aspartame, however you say it, that is the number E951. Anything that has aspartame in it, down here, has to have the label that says contains phenylalanine, which can cause severe allergic reactions. Also, any time you have caffeine in a product, it has to have the amount of caffeine, or at least have it listed that it contains caffeine. And also, if anything has guarana in it, it has to be listed that it has guarana. All right. To the food additives. Now, if you remember a few minutes ago, I was talking about food additives and they're all given a number and the number is universal. So right throughout the world, it's exactly the same numbering system. Now, I can't remember them. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, so don't feel too bad. But what I always do is I always make sure that uh, any product that I get, I do do a lot of uh, research into it. And the internet's wonderful for this these days, or I can help you. Uh, you can help, you can understand the food additives in your food. Now, I've just highlighted with my little red uh, pointer here some numbers in an ingredients list. So, for example, soy lecithin has less than I can't say it has the number four seven six. So, if you went up to the additives additives list, you would see that it is actually a thickener, a stabilizer, or an emulsifier. Okay, and now down to the last one, the raising agent, number 500, you'll see up into the additives list, list it is an acidity regulator or an anti-caking agent. So basically the number, that's the purpose for the number. Thank you. Okay, so there are good additives and there are bad additives. Now here's some of the good. Most products will actually, or they can put probiotics in them. Now probiotics are great for digestion, Okay, this is a wonderful additive that you can have. A lot of products are now adding fibre because you need to increase fibre in your diet and fibre helps you to, of course, go to the toilet, it helps you to stay feeling full and it also helps to reduce cholesterol. People, are, you can uh, put antioxidants in food. So antioxidants, if for example, lycopene can be added to a food product and lycopene is the red pigment that's found in tomatoes and it has been shown to reduce the risk of prostate cancer. Also, essential fatty acids like omega-3 is a food additive and also any protein and amino acids are food additives. They're good food additives. That's the good and now to the bad.